Welcome to round one of the Lockdown Cup. I'm Mark Jardine, managing editor of sailworld.com and yachtsandyachting.com. And I'll be joined by top sailing commentator Andy Green and the RYA's Alistair Dixon will be compiling results. We have the cream of British sailing, both amateur and full-time racing today in the virtual regatta inshore game. The Lockdown Cup is, as they say in football, a game of two halves. Round one today, we'll see our British sailing superstars jostle for a top five overall position to make it through to round two, which will be held next Wednesday, the 22nd of April. They will then take on five members of the public who will be selected from hundreds of applications in our competition. They will be filtered using criteria covering everything from experience of using the virtual regatta inshore game to their motivation to beat the best of the UK dinghy sailing scene. If you haven't yet entered the competition, then head to yachtsandyachting.com and search for Lockdown Cup competition and fill in the form. The closing date is this Friday, so don't delay. Let's take a look at the racing format. Hi there. Following the success of the AWA and Yachts and Yachting e-sailing demonstration event, I'm pleased to announce the launch of the Lockdown Cup. This will take place in three different parts. The first of which is today, where the e-sailers from the demonstration event will do battle once more, with the top five qualifying for the final, which will be held at four o'clock next Wednesday, the 22nd of April. They will be joined by another five entries, which is open to the UK public via an online competition, where the applicants will be selected via the following merits. Experience and success in playing the virtual regatta game, enthusiasm and love for the sport of sailing, confidence and sense of humour, and the motivation to beat some of the UK Olympic and top amateur dinghy racers uh, on the scene. Applications are open via Yachts and Yachting and the five challengers selected will join them next Wednesday. Uh, so good luck with that if you're applying and I hope you enjoy today's racing. Thank you. I'm delighted to be joined today by Sailor, America's Cup and Match Racing commentator Andy Green, who is currently in Newport, Rhode Island as my co-commentator. Andy, welcome. How excited are you to be commentating on virtual racing history with possibly one of the greatest lineups of UK dinghy racing talent ever assembled? Hi, Mark. Great to hear from you. Well, obviously, I'm always excited with the chance to talk about some racing particularly online here, which is rather the oddest place. And also even odder, not a single person nearby, but fortunately we've got 17 pro racers ready to do battle virtually. It is lockdown and it is quite a strange scene, but great to hear you. And so nice to see you, Mark, to see and hear you, Mark, an old friend from university, also Itchner, Weymouth and Southampton. To be honest, I witnessed things that no man should ever have to see that Mark Jardine did. But now, a uh, married father, uh, we won't uh, go into any of that stuff now. But I'm very, I'm very excited. Looking forward to it, Mark. Brilliant. Let's go. Well, Andy, thanks so much for that. Well, um, just a fortnight ago, we ran our e-sailing demonstration event. There was chaos, bashes and banter galore. So let's take a look at some of the action. <laughs> Looks like we've got a pretty big a split in the fleet. And we can see the fleet very evenly matched coming into the windward mark here. I basically took advantage of the extensive rule breaking and um, <laughs> knocked myself <laughs> in after a shocking beat. Fighting out the top three, just 10 metres separating the top three. Andy Taxi Davies, many of you will know him from the UK dinghy scene. Uh, well, I wish I had smaller thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> So that Ben Saxton there just causing a complete pile up on the windward mark. The problem with winning the pin though is it's such a short racetrack that you rarely oh, actually get back oh. into the fleet. So I'm horribly overstood right now. It's pretty tight racing though, it's good. Now I'm back down to 10th now, I've lost it. And what's the story of the, the panda on your sail? It's fun, isn't it? 
<laughs> You've moved up the fleet. Yeah, just looking for another solid race here. Going to hunt Matt down this bottom run. Oh, I've just broken a rule. Brilliant. Hi, good afternoon and welcome to the rematch of our virtual regatta demonstration event. Uh, it's also the qualifier for next Wednesday's Lockdown Cup. Uh, so before we start, I'm just going to quickly run through the entry list. Uh, so I'll start with myself, Adam McGovern, who somehow managed to win the demonstration event. Uh, I've been joined today by Luke Patience, uh, 470 Olympic silver medalist. Johnny McGovern, uh, British sailing team 470 coach. Ailey McIntyre, the current 470 world champion. Sam Whaley, the current International Laser Class Association national champion. Ben Saxton, a multiple endeavor winner, uh, national champion, past Olympian, world and European champion. Uh, he's just a general legend. Uh, Christian Birrell, a current Merlin Rocket national champion. Katie Burridge, a two-time sail juice winner in the Laser 2000. Matt Me, a multiple national champion in classes such as the RS200, GP14 and Merlin Rocket. Andy Taxi Davis, uh, again multiple champion in Merlin Rocket, Solo, GP14, Scorpion. Uh, Sam Watson, the current GP14 national champion. Uh, Dave Hivey, a Moth European champion and a former RS200 national champion. Uh, Stuart Biffle, a 470 Olympic silver medalist and a 49er world champion. Uh, Nick Craig, a multiple Endeavour winner and national champion in so many classes, I can't even name them all. Uh, and Finn Sterrett, uh, again a multiple 49er world cup champion and the 2017 world silver medalist in the 49er class. Uh, so a great field today and I hope you enjoy the racing. Thank you. Here we go. One minute and 12 seconds to go. We got 14 skippers, a couple of no-shows. But uh, we've got Luke Pace, Johnny McGovern. I'm going to have to link all of the... OK, I'm going to have to link all of the skippers to the boats and try and give you an idea as we get along here. But we are live now. 53 seconds to go, as I said before. Welcome. You are looking at the first lockdown cup. Oh, bit of a port starboard. That didn't look very good in the, we got the panda, the panda bear. Who's that? Me, Ben Saxon. <laughs> ben Saxon. What are you doing there? That looked, it looked maybe like you were on starboard, but just uh, while we get 30 seconds to go, we're going to do the long windward course. 25 seconds. We've got all of the sailors ready here. Luke Patience, silver medalist in the 470. Johnny McGovern. We've got uh, Sam Whaley, Ben Saxton, Christian Birrell, Adam McGovern, Katie Burridge, Andy Davis, Taxi, Sam Watson, Stuart Bithell, four, three, two, one, and a gun. Look at that, very impressive start from our 14 boats out there. Incredibly impressive, Adam. On a really good pin end start. I tell you, there's been some practicing there. We had a cup, we had an over the line, did we? Someone went back. Who's that going back? That was me, Sam Whaley. Yeah, over the line. Sam, how'd you know you were over the line? No, oh, I'd said massive full start on my screen, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, oh dear. Okay, well, you're back to you quarantine there. Go back down, start again. For those of you not uh, first off in sailing, uh, you can't be over the line at the gun. But at the moment, we've got uh, Adam. Davis, Adam Taxi, current GP14 national champion. Adam, is that you? One up from the pin, it looks like, Adam. Uh, there's me, I think that's me, one up. I'm, I'm um, on the boat with the poor one. I'm unfortunately not the current GP14 national champion. No, that's Sam in the, uh, the light blue boat. Okay, wait, you, we got, 
So which boat are you in? You're with the poor. I've got the brown and grey poor on the sail. Just tacked over onto port now with uh, Sam Watson just underneath me. Oh, Andy McGovern. Yes, I got it. Okay. Ex-Blind Sailing World Champion and the sighted, uh, as the sighted tactician. Okay, good. Right. I think this would be tricky with Braille, this online stuff. We are um, on board with Adam right now as they come across to the starboard ley line. You can see there Adam just going across on port tack. So you've got a couple of starboard tackers coming up you there. Do you reckon it's attack? Yeah, straight yeah, away. Yeah. No, why no duck there, Adam? Um, there's too many to duck. I didn't think my fingers weren't, uh, weren't nimble enough to get below them all. Okay, is that Christina coming in from the left-hand side? And uh, you, you see, you're seeing a few wind shifts here and there. And... Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, I'm on a, a header at the minute, so uh, just got to sit in it. Unfortunately, because I'm fairly, uh, fairly on the left-hand side. You, yeah, you're definitely uh, losing. They decide to just duck underneath there. That is uh, Mike Blue, Sam GP, Sam GP14. So Sam Watson. Here we go. Current GP14 national champion is that right sam that's certainly right yeah yeah i'm uh, got, what, so just uh, talk to us about uh, where, where was that when was it uh, that was last august we were in abasuk uh in sunny abasuk which is absolutely ideal it reminded me this weather on the game right now reminds me that the weather we had in abasuk yeah uh, i thought we were in portsmouth here but it looks uh, a li li little more like the British Virgin Islands. Anyway, Doesn't we'll figure like it out. Here we go. Uh, around the top mark, uh, we pull. Leading is that with the Biffmeister in second. So that's we Luke pull. Patience Luke Patience. in the lead All with right. Stu Bithell straight behind. Yeah, Mark, just give it. Just go with the uh, the leaderboard right now as we go around the top mark. Maybe we get off Adam and just give us a first. There we are, downwind. We're on board with Wee Pearl. That's Luke Patience. And he's heading down on starboard. The yeah. Biffmeister, Stu Bithell, decided to go off onto Port Jibe. So it's going to be interesting what pays down this run. Why? Why did you do that, though? This is a computer. <laughs> well, Stu, what uh, why, was your reasoning for heading off on Port Jibe there? Yeah, I just see on my little screen here that there's potentially a bit more pressure on the right hand uh, side of the track as you look at wind so if I was racing my 49er I'd be getting in the extra breeze and it's kind of looking like it's paying off coming at loose yeah. now on this starboard. is going to be close right that is not bad at all uh, now can I change Is am I looking at the feed view here Mark or because I'm, I'm stuck with Adam at the moment okay we are right if you click on the leaderboard you can go to any of the sailors just click on whichever sailor you want Right now, the wee pearl, yeah, and that's a very close rounding between the Biffmeister and the Wee Pearl. Uh, the two of them doing very nicely. How much do you lads practice on this virtual regatta? <laughs> uh, quite a Come lot. Come on, no quite poker faces. Tell quite us it real. We do it a fair amount. I've been, I, I did the Italian nationals the other week as well. <laughs> and I've How was seen the Italian in between nationals? these races that we've been running, a number a of you of have been out and just practicing different races. So how many of you are actually racing every single day? So Dave Hyvie, for example, how often are you racing? I was doing ones every midday. It was good fun, but I had to stop and I had to go back to work this week, which was a bit of an annoying. But um, yeah, most days I've been racing at 12 o'clock. It's a good release, isn't it, to play in it? Uh, not that thing called work. I know. So what does what is going back to work involve? Teaching. And how, Remotely. Is that <laughs> online? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Talking at a computer and hoping that people are listening to me. Yeah. Okay, we're going to be we're switching to be on board with Adam now. Adam McGovern coming in on port tack towards the second windward mark. Okay, Stu Bithell, I want to ask you, you, you like that right-hand side on the downwind, but on the upwind, uh, went a little lot soft on you, did it? Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, I actually got forced to the wrong gate by Luke at the bottom, but I had uh, initially the best bit of pressure, but I'm just struggling to get back to the fleet now. See Adam's doing really well up on that port ley line and a good shift and pressure. 
You should see Nick Craig. He's bowed down doing about 55 true at the minute. People, and now he's normally a pincher as well. There we are. With, we're on board with Nick Craig and we can see, yes, he is way off the breeze just trying to come into this windward mark, but in fourth place. OK, well, let's talk to Nick Craig. Uh, Nick, the last time I saw you, I think we were drunk in a bar in uh, Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, you were passed out in the van. But uh, perhaps you'd like to tell us since then, it looks like you've won every regatta that is known to man. Nick, can you hear us? He's never been good at multitasking, that boy. <laughs> <laughs> OK, yep, he's, he's in fifth place. He's raised his kite around between the windward mark and the hitch mark. And we are now following him and the fleet heading downwind towards the finish. With Adam in the lead, we pearl, Adam, that's Luke Adam Patience going in low second and place. fast. Much better, uh, much better exit out of that mark from, uh, uh, from Luke. Luke yeah, was just a little high back. trying to get the breeze in, but now Luke Patience having to go all the way towards the ley line. Now finally jibes. Here we got a tight coming together here. Oh, it looks like it might this be is tight. A starboard. Oh, very close. And Patience had to jibe back, and it's between Luke Patience and uh, Stuart Bithell, a rather a particular combination. Those two sailed plenty before, but they're having, they are having a right a battle, battle for second and third finish. place Mark. there. But they're in the lead. Coming into the finish line, we have got the winner of the demonstration event, Adam McGovern, takes the win. This is really tight between Stu Bithell and Luke Patience. Who's going to take this? Oh, oh, oh last minute. Line, right just. on the line, stupid. Just ahead of the wee pearl. Luke Patience. That's, um, um, that's, gone, to the, that's gone for a steward's inquiry, that, that one has. Right at the pin. So many rules involved. I, I've got to, get out the, uh, got to get out the book here. I can't, it's, there was water, there was port starboard, there was 16, there was jibing too soon. Uh, Stu, tell us. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to lie. I might have the rules of the game a little bit there. I'm sure if that was real racing, I'd be um, I'd be definitely de skewed But the fact is, we're not in the racing. We're VR racing. Right, so it's just change. You've got to adapt, right? Adapt to the conditions. Exactly. Adapt to the rules. Race officer here, Mark. Do you want me to get it, it cracking? Yes, all set to go. Adam, let's get into the sequence and start race two. Right, let's go. This is definitely more nerve-wracking than normal sailing. <laughs> I'm actually better at this than normal sailing. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, what were your thoughts on race one there? Well, I, I mean, just... I, all I could do was just hold on to my hat, really, and watch it all happen. we got some serious experts here. Not only good sailors actually on the water, but it looks like this lot are taking their dedication to their racing prowess online as well. And I'm going to do the same thing as you, Mark. I'm going to try and find that. Uh, here we go. Found it. We got 17 logged in. We got 17 registered. How many people have we got sailing? Well, what I was particularly surprised about, quality of the start. I don't think I could get off the start line like that. Well, I couldn't anyway, but I couldn't get it on there. There we go. Right. 18 seconds. Let's get eyes down onto the race course. 15 seconds to go. Winner of the last race. We've been through the results. We'll get them off the start line. Then we'll come back down to you, Mark, for a little summary of the results from the last race. Here we go. Three, two, one. And that is a go, gun, go. And Andy McGovern at the pin end of the line. He is showing some serious skills. We're looking out across the race course, Portsmouth, England. Oh, look, we've got one of the forts there just on the top left-hand side of the uh, race course as the boats come off. And Christina's uh, doing pretty good work. She was, uh, <laughs> she was in the top five, I think, in the last race. But let's go down. Who have we got doing results for us here, Mark? We've got Alistair Dixon from the RYA who is compiling the results. What were the official results of race one? So the official results, uh, Mark and Andy, they're pretty close. But Adam McGovern, uh, winner of the demo event, like you're saying, Mark, another first. Uh, Stu Bithell just sneaked through into second there. 
Luke, Luke Patience very close into third. And then we went to Dave Hivey, solid performer in fourth, and Nick Craig in fifth. Nick Some Craig fantastic in racing there. I'll be honest, Nick Craig in fifth, a bit disappointing to me. I'd expect more from him at this level. That man, the best amateur sailor in, uh, oh, uh, in I don't know, any better because he's won a lot of stuff. But we can't talk to him now because he doesn't seem to have his audio on. So we can just be rude about him. Here we go. Port Starboard here at the pit in yellow. Uh, yellow is uh, Andy Davis, Taxi Davis. And, and, and here with the panda on his sail. In the Merlin Rocket. The here with solo, the panda the on his sail, right on the, star I bet he's on the starboard side. We are on with Ben Saxton. Just talking of the Endeavour Trophy winners. We have got... A really quite a legend here. So how's it going here there, Ben? So far, I haven't had as many penalties in the last one. Um, I came last but one in the first race, so here's the hoping this one goes a bit better. Mm, uh, you'll struggle to be any worse than that, mate. You could you could give it a nudge, but only one spot. So Yeah, I know. Best, um, so yeah, here's the hoping. Yeah, and I it's, and it's reporting that. here that Luke Patience and Ben Saxton, you are actually neck and neck in this race. How close is this going to be? Luke, how's it feeling? <laughs> it feels all right at the minute. I'm just kind of just dawdling along, making sure my risk is low. Um, and I've got the big panda sat on my windward hip. So, um, yeah, you got don't never trust a panda. Yeah, the Ben Saxton the panda, race, very good. I like this uh, customization of boats. I think there should be more of that. We'll go down to Ben, Port Leyline, have you overstood? Talk to I'm, us. I'm, I'm going to go all the way here because then I box Luke up. Trying to control yeah. the fleet coming into this mark. And here okay, we can so see we'll the leaders just approaching the windward mark. And Luke Ben was Mike. all over Luke there, just completely covered him into that mark. Yeah, all right, Mark, chill out. Uh, poor print. Andy <laughs> McGovern on the pin end there. Feeling a bit touchy there, Luke. <laughs> Absolutely. Ego's on the line here, Chief. Yellow is Andy <laughs> Davis. Okay, Ben Saxon leading. There, Luke, straight away, the jive set on the windward mark. What was your thinking there? Oh, a bit of fear, to be honest. I, I was getting my getting covered the whole of the last time win, and it never, never does well, that. So I'm getting out and clean, clear and simple. And the experts in this game, the wind shadow from these boats is really quite substantial. Uh, Adam, could you describe a little bit of that in an uncustomary sixth place that I see you in right now? Adam. Yeah, here, sorry, Mark. Can you describe focus. the... That's uh, what focus is. Can't even do the old uh, commentating and there. feedback. We've got uh, Ben Saxon leading. So it's a double jibe into the bottom mark, Ben. Talk to us through this bottom mark rounding. Which uh, mark to choose? Where are you going to go upwind? Why are you thinking? I'm thinking I'm going to jibe. I don't know. I can't decide. There's more wind on the left, but the gate mark is unbiased. So that's the conundrum. OK, here it goes. Round the bottom mark there. Oh, uh, mark. oh and attack. Whoops. That was user error. User error auto tack around top mark, then tack back. I mean, if you're leading, not many people would say do two tacks within the first uh, 15 seconds yeah, uh, of your mark error, rounding. But hey ho, you seem yeah. to be okay here. You're generally feeling like the left is better for breeze. Is that right? Mid left, yeah, I think it's good. Yeah. Okay, and how are you finding lockdown? I uh, kind of really want to go sailing. Like I'm missing the excitement of going sailing, which is why this is fun. <laughs> um, when do you think you'll be able to get out and go sailing? How long's a piece of string? I don't know. We have no idea. When it's safe. Yes, quite. How oh, long's that's a political answer. Okay, let's go down to uh, second place here, Sam. Uh, oh, Sam, oh. GP14. Sam, what are you trying to do to get ahead of Ben? And uh, how are you finding uh, home? Tell us about your setup. You've got computers all around? <laughs> I mean, I've just got my laptop at the minute um, but yeah I'm, I'm heading over to this left hand side I think I've gone a little too far unfortunately but the idea was um, there's, there's quite a quite a decent gloss coming down this left hand side of the, the beach so that was my that was my game um, Sam, Sam it looks like you are right on the ley line if not over there do you think you've gone just that little bit too far 
I think I'm in the. I think I'm in the pressure, which is good. I think I'm in the breeze. Um, so I, I think I'm all right. I am a little bit over. I might have lost a little bit out to to Wee Pearl there, but um, I'm I'm in I'm in the breeze, which is good. We can see Wee Pearl seems to be on a nice little lift coming into this mark. Do you think you're going to be able to retake second place there from Sam? Uh, let me tell you now. No, I don't. I don't. <laughs> but, but I'm waiting for the dime win for that. Okay, unless, I've got... Unless I can get Ben to do a nice wee team race uh, move for me. If he can mark traps him and I'll slip in there. He did a decent one on the first rounding, so why not the second? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, that was against you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Johnny McGovern, are you there? Can you hear us? Are you online and sailing? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Oh, I thought I thought you might have been leaving it out to your cat. What's going on? What's going okay. wrong? I think, mate, I think I've left my bung out. I'm not doing well here. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm breaking rules all over the place and uh, just chasing tails at the moment. Well, Johnny, uh, 470 oh, coach for our British sailing team. Uh, you know, <laughs> when you see your sailors in this sort of problem, second to last. In mm. fact, you might have been last. I'm not even sure Katie's racing. Uh, mm. What sort of top tips do you give them? Head down, get it, get it together. Yeah, I mean, if you're at the back of the fleet, you can still do the best jibe, can't you? So uh, we're uh, just focused on doing the next right thing. And okay. Johnny, that coming in on port tack, right in at the windward mark, and then just fouling the other boats, is that something you'd recommend when coaching? Probably not. I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend that one. Uh, it's not been doing me too well today. OK, let's hook in again with the leaders, where we've got Ben Saxton just coming in towards the finish line here. He's done a nice job, Ben. Extended, 88 meter lead. He's got uh, he's got the panda on his blue sails and goes across the line with a little showboating, a double jibe, across the line. Did you, uh, Ben, tell us about how you felt? And then I've got a follow up question for you. Uh, well, that race felt a lot better. I didn't make any penalties, so that was uh, that was um, the difference, I think. And are the pandas on your sail, do they represent the joyous news that the two pandas in the Chinese zoo, having had no visitors for six months, have now began to procreate themselves uh, without any that, help? But, um, uh, that is good news. No, it's yeah. just I like the look of the pandas. They look nice. OK, we're in the pre-start with one minute to go. And everybody lining up again. We have seen superb starts from the first two races. So let's see if we're going to get the same in race three. And Alistair, who do you think's in the lead at the moment, according to your leaderboard? Uh, well, I think I would put my money on currently. Wee Pearl looks pretty good with two thirds. Um, Adam was right that I, I did get the results uh, incorrect uh, when I read them out last time. So I've, I've quickly corrected those. He's looking pretty good uh, with a first and a fifth. So I think he's probably in second with Sam Watson clipped behind. That's, I haven't added them up, but that's my initial... Well, a first and a fifth on tie break would put him in the lead. We are on board with Wee Pearl here, just coming in right on the committee boat here with five seconds to go. Ben Saxton just holding him out at the committee boat end. Nice, Ooh, couple of boats over the line for penalty. sure. Am yeah. I on the penalty? What was that for? I believe you might have hit the committee boat there. Oh, shit. The committee boat isn't even real. I will sail straight <laughs> through it. Well, if you sail straight through it, then maybe you hit it. <laughs> Christina, is she online? Christina, can you hear us? Yeah, it's actually Finn. That's just the name of my boat. Oh, Finn, That's how you Finn doing? Sterrett. We're just on board with him good. now. Oh, yeah, yeah Finn. Not... OK, multiple 49er World Cup champion and world silver medalist 2017. You seem to be right in the hunt here. Starting at the picking off underneath the fleet. Is that a standard strategy for you? It has been in the last few races, but it hasn't been working particularly well for me. So I've decided to, to get out early and maybe get a bit of starboard advantage further up the beat. And we've got a user question here for you, Finn. Uh, what is the what panic buying item did you buy that has proved to be completely unnecessary? 
Uh, well, I actually didn't go in for any of the panic buying. Probably not, um, not because I wouldn't have, but I, I believe I may have already had coronavirus, so I was locked down from the word go oh, before, go. Uh, before the UK was even even into that. So no panic buying for me. You get a tickly cough when a bad... Were you in bed for a week or two? Yeah, I was in bed. I was in bed for... Well, not for too long. It was pretty mild, to be honest, but all the symptoms suggested it may have been coronavirus so I've stayed away well, did the right thing well, we'll find out when you get your your vaccine we just had uh dave hivey there uh you look you, dave you look like you had a few pointing issues on the left hand side of the course um not too bad i think the wind's about to come back to the right so i might come out of it a little bit better than i was looking a second ago okay all right well, there you are got, you're uh, right out on the starboard side yeah do you think you're going Andy to be able Davies. to cross the fleet here? I think most people, yeah. It looks like the wind's going to go right a little bit in a minute, so we'll see. This is going to be a tight call, but you're below the ley line. When are you going to take that hitch up to get right onto the ley line? I'll find Stu and then I'll tack on top of him, I think. <laughs> nice. This is going to be tight coming into this mark. We've Damn. got the top four, just six metres separating them. Sam having to do big duck there. Is that you, Sam uh, Watson, going in there? That certainly was, yeah. I've just come in behind Sam Whaley there. Ooh. Oh, that looked like a foul. Uh, that's Who was that? Boat number 13 with the uh, lion. Yeah, that's me, Johnny McBoat there. <laughs> oh, Johnny McBoat face. Yeah, crashing around the race course. Johnny, not keeping um, it clean at all today. Um, what's um, up? No. I mean, I was pressing my key really hard, but it wasn't turning any faster. <laughs> yeah, Here, the fleet Johnny down McGovern. wind. We've got Ben Saxton in the lead. With David Hivey, who is exactly right. That shift did take him from 10th all the way up to second place yeah. on that beat into, on that starboard tack into the windward mark. So, I, I so Johnny... Um, is there a, like a quid pro quo when you can get Ben to come and uh, coach you on the virtual and you can go over there and coach him in real time? Yeah, I mean, it looks that way. He's obviously been uh, spending some hours on the game here. Boy, oh boy, yeah. No kids, no girlfriend, no friends. <laughs> but very good at online sailing. <laughs> and Ben Saxton, you just seem to be streaking away with this. Have you just spotted the shifts well? I think so. Dave called the righty, so I went to the right. Um, and then, yeah, I got... Once, once you're head downwind, it gets easier because no one's jiving on you. And I've got around the load mark without tacking twice, so it's going well. That's a good change there. Finn, mm. talk, talk us through this mark rounding, Finn. Is that Finn or Ben? <laughs> Finn just went round in uh, zero one, and it's got a nice. Uh, had to uh, go around the right hand, uh, the left hand mark as we look up wind. Uh, Finn, can you hear us? You went from uh, fifth to second, looking good. Yeah, I've managed to sneak by a few there. The downwind went well, but uh, I feel like I'm on the wrong side of the race course at the minute. So you managed to cross over Dave Ivy there, where it was very close to Gerbil Racing, who's in now in fourth. We got Ben with a 60 meter lead in this third and final race. Oh, look, we can see old Portsmouth, South Sea front in the background there. Lovely pictures of, um, you know, the beautiful Portsmouth on the daylight today, sunny and warm with this sort of racing going on. Who wants to be anywhere else? Yeah, whatever. I'd like to be outside. <laughs> so we'll move on with Ben Saxton. We're on board now. A complete controlling position over the fleet. This must feel very comfortable right now, Ben. Yeah, it's nice. The whole fleet wanted to go to the right, so that made it easier to cover up the second fleet than it could have been. Uh, so I've just come back below the lay to try and make it easy. And yeah, it should be all right, hopefully. And Where's the shift going to go next? What tip would you give to aspiring virtual regatta sailors on those downwind legs? Because you really did just take it away from the fleet there. Have clear wind, because the dirty air is uh, huge in this virtual world. Whereas in the real world, you can sit in a little bit of dirty air. In this world, you can't. We've got an amazing view, as Andy says, looking straight at the fleet, heading upwind. 
and there with the Spinnaker Tower in the background. This really is just a stunning day in Portsmouth. <laughs> I agree. That never happened. <laughs> this is where we know it's virtual. <laughs> I was very disappointed. No America's Cup World Series. That was going to be a lot of fun. Portsmouth uh, South Sea Waterfront do a really nice job of that. It would have been beautiful, but this will have to do in the current circumstances. Right. And here we are with Adam coming into the windward mark and rounding in second place. And Finn Sterrett just rounding third. Finn, how's it going there? Yeah, good. Um, this is my best race so far, so I'm stoked. I don't think I'm going to do quite enough to get into the top five, mind you. It's not bad, though. And just Nick behind you've around got there. So Finn, uh, Finn, best thing on Netflix right now? Uh, Tiger King. That's worth a watch. Not sure there's a lot of fact in it, but quite entertaining. Yeah. Yeah, very entertaining. A real nice commentary on American life, uh, Florida life particularly. And right behind you, oh, we've look got at that. Stu Ben Bithel. is just now Stu, jib, doing extra going? jibes on the downwind. Adam, 165 metres behind. This is a crushing victory in the third race. Ben, how are you feeling? Uh, not really under pressure now. No, I should be able to get through on a straight line here. So, yeah, we're happy. That's followed on from the second race and we've forgotten the first race. So that's good. It there is We're a bit of an underground movement the finish across here. the finishing line going backwards. Uh, that's a bit of virtual skill I'm hearing. I don't own that skill. Go on, <laughs> now! No! <laughs> ah. And there, you've taken the win. <laughs> oh dear, all right. Well, we're going to have to work on that. We'll get the coach out. <laughs> I need Johnny to tell me. Yeah. <laughs> Johnny's doing a very good job all on his own, sailing backwards. No, Johnny in seventh. <laughs> Don't hey, I'm 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 too I'm soon, making a move. 15 meters. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm making a move here. It might be a bit late in the series for it. Oh, you got me. Yeah, coming right back. Oh, here we go. That's great. Great push into the finish right there. Nice. Johnny seventh. Andy Taxi, Taxi Davies. Were you all fingers or all thumbs today? I think my thumb's gone numb. <laughs> Well, there we are, three races completed. We'll now wait for Alistair for the official results <laughs> to see who has won round one of the Lockdown Cup and, crucially, who are the top five who will be facing the competition winners next week in round two of the, of the Lockdown Cup. Yeah, so just bear with me, Mark. I'm just adding up. Just jotting down the results now. I'll be back with you in a couple of minutes. Don't want to get these these results okay. wrong. There's a lot in it. Okay, Andy, um, your view now now that you've seen three races of this virtual racing with the creme de la creme of the British racing scene, what were your thoughts? I mean, it just makes me want to get out and go sailing, but I'm very impressed with uh, some of the practice that's clearly been going on during quarantine. We can tell those who uh, have a little extra time on their hands for sure. And uh, Ben has really taken this, taken this on. I do enjoy it. It's some very nice, quick races. You can play with all your mates. Um, I do like the fact that uh, there is a heavy penalty for bad air and the wind shifts don't seem too extreme. So good sailing is rewarded. A lot of fun. It looks great. And there's a load of analysis we can do here. And um, I've just got up the race legs chart from race three here. And we can see that actually Ben Saxton led that race from start to finish the entire way through. So, Andy, this, this really was superb racing by Ben there. Yeah, great racing. Good start. I, I mean, good starting throughout the fleet. But uh, Ben just seems to have a little bit of extra... Uh, skills with his thumbs on his uh, his online wrist action. I'm going to have to give this a little play this afternoon and uh, see if I can at least get myself out of uh, out of my bedroom and onto the waters of Portsmouth. Uh, you can choose some other locations, I'm sure. Uh, can we go to uh, Tokyo just to do a little um, precursor to the maybe Olympics? Luke, talk to us and St Luke and Stu just talk to us about that. Yeah. Well, I mean. Yeah, the maybe Olympics are maybe happening, aren't they? 
But if we could get to Tokyo and get some arrows in on this game, that would that would at least uh, at least show some willing. Okay, we're going to lobby for a new race course. Yeah, let's get it done. All right, very good. Well, well okay. so I've on enjoyed it. We'll get Nick Craig. I, we need to get Nick Craig on the audio because I've got a lot of things to say to Nick. I haven't seen him for twenty years, but I've raced a lot of races on the university uh, team racing tour with Nick. And uh, I'm sure he's got some really hilarious things to say. OK, so I've got the results here. It looks like Adam McGovern has, has crept away with another win. He scored eight points with a first and a fifth and a second. Uh, in second place, we've got Ben Saxton, who, after his 12th place in the first race, scored two firsts. So he ended up with 14. Then Luke, Luke Patience, following his, his two thirds for the first and second race, he had a tenth, uh, so he ended up with 16. Uh, and then Dave Hivey, fairly consistent, fourth and an eighth and a fifth to, to end up with 17 points in the fourth place. And then we had a tie. So we had both Nick Craig and Sam Watson on 18 points. Uh, initial look at the tiebreaker looks like Sam Watson might have just done it uh, there with the second place in race two. Uh, and then following on from that, out, just outside was Finn Sterrett. So they're, they're the results with the top five who are going to make it through to the final. So provisionally, we have got going through to round two of the lockdown cup. We've got Adam McGovern, the, McGovern, the winner of the demonstration event, has also won round one. Ben Saxton, despite a poor first race, two bullets in the in the race is two and three. Nice, uh, put man. him through in second place. Luke Patience on 16 points, just behind. Again, one poor race, but then two good races. David Hivey, who's clearly spent a lot of time on this, is in fourth place. And it looks like Sam Watson, by the slimmest of margins, has mm. just got ahead of the dinghy racing legend who is nick craig who is just just missed out on round two this looks like it's incredibly tight results this is provisional at the moment we will have that confirmed when the event report is out later today nice so Lovely. andy your closing thoughts on today well what 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 fun and how nice to uh talk to some sailing fans and fellow human beings maybe not personally but gets me out from my uh, wife and children for uh, 55 minutes so i'm extremely happy and uh, very impressed with the standard i don't know why i shouldn't be because as you say mark some of the cream of the crop of dinghy racing in the uk some of our olympians and our champions all around great to uh, watch you all sailing and get a master class from some of the top teams and Super sailing in a sunny Portsmouth. Loved it. Well, we'll be putting an event report up shortly on yachtsandyachting.com and it'll be, be sent out worldwide. And on Wednesday, the 22nd of April, will be round two of the Lockdown Cup. If you haven't entered the competition yet, head to yachtsandyachting.com, search for the Lockdown Cup competition and fill in the form so that you can get your chance to race against those five skippers who's made it through to round two. Many thanks indeed for joining us this afternoon and we will catch you next week. Does Adam need to do a speech or what? Adam, do you want a speech? Um, well, it's the first, uh, it's my wedding anniversary today. It's the first time I've actually got to go sailing. So uh, that's history for you. <laughs> hey. <laughs> wow, actually got to go sailing on your wedding anniversary. Now there is a turn up for the books. <laughs> I was like, got a busy evening then, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations <laughs> and good luck there, Adam. Cheers. Okay, take care, everybody. Stay safe. Cheers. 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 Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I've ended the stream there. Adam, how are you getting away with that? <laughs> oh, it's too good. Nice ending. Good crap, boys. Good crap.